Hi, this is Morgan Dreamus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm here today with Suzanne Colasanti. Hi. Hi. And you are a fantastic author of super <laughs> romantic young adult uh, novels, and I have to say, I will I will put money down on this. I will bet that readers out there will not read a more romantic book this summer than yours, All I Need, which is coming out this month. It is heart meltingly ridiculously hearts and flowers <laughs> valentine's day oh. awesome <laughs> oh thank you when you oh. when you sat down to write this love story between seth and sky did you know that you wanted it to be um really really sweet they have their problems but there's a sweetness that really underlies their relationship is that what you were going for yeah i mean i write about soulmates i'm obsessed with soulmates and true love and i really wanted to write my most romantic book ever so I hope that I've done, achieved that. Done and done. <laughs> I just love the idea of a fun summer romance and, you know, the setting, one of the settings is the beach, Seabright, New Jersey, down the shore. And so a summer romance set on the beach, I feel like is a really, a really good perfect setting for a summer romance. Well, you grew up at least part of the time in New Jersey, is that correct? I so grew up in middle of nowhere, New Jersey, middle in the of middle nowhere, of the woods, <laughs> middle of the woods. Did you, uh, during your teen years, did you ever go to the shore and have kind of a similar, maybe maybe not a romance like Sky does, but have some of the experiences that she does? No, I mean, I just wished for a romance like Sky has with Seth. You know, I wish that one summer I would go down the shore. I had a friend who had a house down the shore, so sometimes I would visit her. And so I always fantasized about going down to the beach and meeting a boy and having just this fun romantic summer. And so, which I never got to have. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just write about it now, which is what I do with a lot of my books. I just write about the times that I wish I'd had, but never had. But never had, so kind this of a, is, a look back. <laughs> yeah, so this is the summer I wish that I'd had this summer. <laughs> And now Seth and Sky can have this summer, so go them. Yes. Well, Seth is, I, I totally fell in love with Seth because he is, he's an artist, and that really comes through in, in like, everything he does. He is, he is so passionate about, about, he does, like, like, found art and collages and things like that. He's so creative. He's so caring. He's thoughtful. And I love the first time Sky sees him, the very first thought she has <laughs> is, this is an intense boy. And he does have an intensity about him. Like, what? Why did you want to to create this artist character when kind of the bad boys get a lot of attention? <laughs> but he's not like that at all. No, he's a very good, warm, kind, caring, intelligent boy with a heart of gold. And I just think that's my ideal boy. You know, my ideal boy <laughs> too. <laughs> Yeah, he. I I do this a lot. I like to write about my fantasy boys, mm -hmm. um, and Seth is definitely one of them. I've I've always loved artists and musicians, and so I love the idea of making Seth an artist and doing his collages. I love doing collages myself, so just using the found objects and recycled, repurposed objects and large scale collages. I just I see them in my mind, and they look really cool. <laughs> and he, when when he um, goes to give Sky presents, he, she is um, from a wealth, well, wealthy family, not hugely rich, but a wealthy family. And he's definitely not. He's he's from a working class family. So when he goes to give her like presents to say, you know, to kind of show how much he cares for her, instead of buying her these big elaborate, you know, diamond necklaces or whatever, <laughs> he he makes things for her and he makes them with so much love. It's it's things that go into their relationship when they visit somewhere. He'll he'll take something to remind him. And I thought this was such a thoughtful thing because, like, I remember doing this um, when I was younger where I'd go, you know, something just to keep that memory. And, and yeah. I, I went back and I looked. I have a box of, like, just these really random objects from, from my teenage years. I have and the same box. I was going to yeah. ask. You yeah. must have a box. I have box. the same box. It has a violin string. I played violin. It has... I think the first tooth that ever fell out of my mouth. It has, you know, just little little pictures from from high school and things. And um, yeah, friendship friendship bracelets from camp. And I'm trying to remember what's in there. Just random beads and Girl Scout badges, things like that. Um, I love that box. I love it's that. magical, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, Sky. I think what made me really, really like her is she could be your friend. She's so realistically portrayed that she's got all of these. You know, she she's got negative thoughts, but then she knows. You know, she's good at certain things, so she she tries to excel at those. And she's got her friends, and sometimes she gets mad at them, and sometimes they get. You know, and it's just she has a really complete 
rounded life? If if you had to say there there was a sky in your life, is there somebody <laughs> around you that you tried to kind of take their personality maybe and put into her? Because she really is a, mm -hmm. a best friend. You could hang out with her. Yeah, I think, again, you know, writing about boys that, you know, I wish had been my boyfriends, which is mainly what I like to do. And then I also try to create strong girl characters because I didn't have high self-esteem in high school. You know, I didn't have confidence. I felt really bad about myself. And I was bullied in junior high and high oh, school. So and It's so common, too. So common to really, I mean, you're finding yourself. And a lot of times, it's not a very pleasant process. Yeah, and I remember wishing that I were a strong girl like Skye. And so I really wanted to create a well-rounded, stable, confident girl. I just have so much respect for teen girls who can be that confident and have strong self-esteem. So in a way, it was sort of like me writing about my fantasy boy with the fantasy version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, oh, I should have said that like two hours later. Uh, you I'm, can I, give her that dialogue. <laughs> girl, I do that all the time. All the time, yeah. So in, in All I Need, we spend a lot of time in your two main characters' heads. But they spend a lot of time in their heads too, kind of thinking, thinking about each other. They're not together the whole time. A lot of times they're they're separated because they they do have a long distance relationship. And actually, when they first meet, they don't they don't share contact information. So they do spend some time apart. But they spend a lot of the time thinking about mm -hmm. each other. Mm. There, there's something so great about that anticipation, don't you think? I know, and just that longing and wondering. I mean, this book is a lot like Serendipity. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. Not just because I love John Cusack, which I do, but just the story of two soulmates meeting on this fabulous night in New York City, and they just have this perfect connection. They have this instant connection and chemistry, and then they go their separate ways for years, but they can't stop thinking about each other. And I just love that story so much. And I love the thought of soulmates coming together and then separating and not being able to find each other because of the anticipation. I'm all about the anticipation. <laughs> so because of the anticipation and are they going to find each other and just that longing and thinking about each other for, for so long. Well, I guess now we sort of know that they do find each other. They um, do. You know, because like you said, they do have a long distance relationship mm -hmm. and so. I like how the book doesn't end with them finding each other and coming together and then it's the end. I like how they do find each other again and then what are the realities of dealing with their different backgrounds, their different life situations. Seth is in college, Sky's still in high school, they don't live that close together and what are the difficulties involved. So it's not just about soulmates and how everything is so perfect with soulmates because a lot of things do feel perfect when you meet a soulmate. Um, but also the real life difficulties and how do you deal with those and how do you stay together despite all of these different conflicts? I think one of the things for me that makes a terrific romance is when both of the partners involved think that they got the better end of the deal. What is she doing with me? She's right, so right. awesome. They both and feel then, so lucky. And then she's yeah, like, oh my yeah. God, he's the best. This is, and and that's, that's something that, that is really the bedrock of this relationship is both of them are so blown away that they're with this such a special person yeah. and you really see that and you get to see the other person through their eyes and it yeah. makes you fall in love with just the couple in general. Yeah. And and I love that they, they both got the better end of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I have that now with my real life boyfriend, actually. Oh, it's like, yay! you know, because he's a soulmate and we both mm -hmm. feel so lucky. I mean, I know I'm luckier because he's amazing. See, but see, he... you've got it. You've got the real Yeah, I mean, there. I do. I mean, he's the sweetest, smartest, funniest, most gorgeous boy ever. And I'm so lucky, <laughs> you know, in that whole thing, like, what is he doing with me? Let's not tell him, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but he feels lucky, too. And so it's mm -hmm. amazing. It's so funny because my editor said it's like I created him, you know, because I've been writing about these boys for years, these soulmates. Um, these boys who, when sort of, I, this is this is hard to articulate in a way because it's so overwhelming, but I feel like when you meet someone and you have such a strong connection and you have such a strong chemistry right away, to me, that defines soulmate. Everyone has a little bit of a different definition of what a soulmate is, but to me, it's a strong chemistry plus a strong connection that you really feel from the start and you can't believe you just met because you feel like you've known them for so long. So my editor was saying it's like you created your boyfriend because, you know, <laughs> writing about these boys for years and years and now finally finding that 
in my real life. It's amazing, but it's all about creative visualization. It's, it's about mm -hmm. dreaming big and then taking steps every day to create your ideal life. And I feel like because I believed that I would meet my soulmate for so long, when it finally happened, I wasn't that surprised. I was You're like, just, yeah, this is where I was going. Yeah. I've always been going towards this. I feel like, because I, I never stopped believing and hoping, even through hard times, I never stopped believing and hoping that I would find him, so. Do you think everyone out there has a possibility to meet their soulmate? I do, because I think there's more than one soulmate for everyone. I don't mm -hmm. think that, in Kissing Jessica Stein, I think uh, Jessica says, yeah, I don't think everyone just has one soulmate. I think they're like seven. You know? <laughs> just so a seven. I feel like just <laughs> seven. So I feel like people have more than one soulmate, sure. You know, you can find that intense chemistry and connection with more than one person. But it's a matter of timing and it's a matter of being happy with your own life and loving yourself so that you can love someone else and be in a healthy relationship. Because if you're not satisfied with your life and if you feel anxious and worried and like you're unsettled and always wishing for things to happen instead of actually making those things happen or at least taking steps to start making those things happen, you're going to feel unsettled and unstable and you're not going to be in a good place to have a healthy relationship. That is, that is such... That is such great advice because if you're not content with yourself, yeah. if you're not happy with yourself, how can that person be happy with you No, too? I mean, you really have to love yourself and be happy with your life in order to exude this energy that will attract your soulmate. Yeah. And it, it just so happens that Sky and Seth, in your book, All I Need, they meet at a really good place. They're both at kind of turning points, either going off to college or making decisions about what they're going to be doing. But it seems like they're both in a place where they are... Even though there's question marks, they're they're happy, healthy, you know, individuals. And, and when they come together, they just become so much more once they do come together. It's the yin-yang combination. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so All I Need is out this month, and it is absolutely the perfect summer read. I suggest everyone goes out and gets it. And thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. This was so much fun.